Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. It's that time of the week again. It is the Premier League Prediction Show. Game week two of the season. The brand new season is upon us. And of course, we've got some even bigger games coming up as the Premier League continues to take shape across a brand new campaign. Big games coming up in this round of Premier League fixtures, uh, a London derby, a Monday night fixture and, uh, and other Premier League fixtures that will look interesting and mouth-watering as the best league in the world continues. I'm going to obviously be going through each and every game and giving my predictions and slight analysis on the game. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you to please like the video and also subscribe for a new both ones or wherever and will be greatly uh, appreciated. But for now, let's get into the predictions. We're kicking things off with Saturday's lunchtime fixture between Aston Villa and Everton. Both of these teams suffered defeats last time out in the opening game of the brand new season. But this time around, it could be different for one of these two sides. Uh, this obviously is uh, ha has the underlying story, the narrative of two former England midfielders who uh, obviously used to be rivals in their club days and together in the England scene. Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard clashing head-to-head -head this time as managers. It's going to be interesting to see which one comes out on top this time around. I think could be an interesting game this one um, for maybe all the wrong reasons. Um, Villa, as a didn't have the best of stars last week going up against a newly promoted club at their home ground, whilst Everton, of course, were beaten by Chelsea. Uh, a prediction that was more predictable than the Villa result. But this one could be interesting. And of course, 12.30 12, uh, 12 kickoff were always sort of hit and miss in terms of predictions and everything. Um, I want to go with a Villa win. I think the home the home advantage, I think, will will carry them over the line here. I think Gerard will get them riled up after last week's poor performance and defeat. And I think Villa will get the job done. That is why I want to go for a 2-1 Villa win. Next up, Arsenal are at the Emirates Stadium. They're at home as they take on Leicester. Obviously, Arsenal put up a perfect uh, performance and victory last weekend. Kicking off the brand new season in style with a 2-0 victory over Crystal Palace. Uh, a very difficult away ground to go to, but Arsenal got the job done. Again, they come up against a lesser side who threw away a two-goal lead last Sunday when they took on Brentford to draw 2-2. There are rumblings of, of things going on behind the scenes at Leicester with, between Brendan Rodgers and the board of uh, a lack of transfer activity. And there are a few rumblings that maybe Brendan Rodgers' job isn't exactly safe or maybe he is getting frustrated at uh, the lack of movement and activity within the transfer window and in terms of refreshing the squad. So this one could be very interesting to see, not just in terms of this game, but in terms of the aftermath of this game as well. In terms of the game, I'm actually yeah, looking forward to it. This one could be a very interesting and a very exciting game of football to watch between two sides who obviously like to get the ball down and play. Could be a very open game. Of course, both sides have dangerous players. Jamie Varley always seems to do well against Arsenal for Leicester and they've also got the likes of James Madison and Yuri Tillemans also in their ranks whilst Arsenal of course uh, Gabriel Jesus was on fire last weekend he, he did everything but score against Crystal Palace Martinelli was a, was a handful Saka we know about um, amongst other players as well such as yeah, Martin Odegaard and so on and so forth so it could be a very intriguing game of football in prospect at 3 o'clock at the Emirates Stadium I'm going to go with an Arsenal win I think Arsenal will have enough about them to get them over the line and get the three points and make it a perfect start to the season I'm going to go with a 3-1 Gunners win Next up is the Seagulls against the Magpies. Brighton host Newcastle at the Amex Stadium. Both sides were victorious on the opening game of their season. Brighton beat Manchester United, of course, in that incredible 2-1 victory. While the Newcastle were 2-0 winners against Premier League new boys and Nottingham Forest. This one could be a very interesting game again. Again, it's, a, it's another 
Um, uh, it's another example of two football teams that like to get the ball down and play some nice and attractive football at times. Brighton, obviously, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how their season unfolds. It, they didn't seem to be missing the likes of Yves Basuma or Mark Cucurella at all last weekend when they took on Manchester United. Um, whilst for Newcastle, they played very well against, against uh, Forest. Um, Fabian Sharp with the pick of the goals probably of last weekend, in all honesty, an absolute thunderbolt of, of, of a strike there. And I, like I say, they're going to be an interesting watch as well. I feel like they're going a little bit under the radar, Newcastle, but that might benefit them in the long run in terms of actually surprising a few people in terms of their, their final uh, position. Looking forward to this game though, like I say, two sides would like to get the ball down and play. Either side could go on and win it, either side have the match winners to go and do it. Um, but I think, I think it will end in a draw. I'm going to call it down the middle, I'm going to go for a draw, I'm going to say that this game will end 1-1 come the final whistle. Next up, Etihad for Manchester City against Bournemouth. The defending Premier League champions Manchester City kicked off their season in fine style, in perfect style by beating West Ham by two goals to nil. And what was even more perfect was the fact that Erling Haaland, their brand new shiny toy, got on the score sheet not once, but twice. And obviously he arrived in style in the Premier League. And I'm sure he's gonna get more goals in the future. And obviously against the Bournemouth side that are Favourites for relegation, despite obviously winning their first game of the season as well against Aston Villa, I still reckon that they're going to be favourites to go down this season. And I would strongly suspect that Haaland is definitely licking his lips at the prospect of more goals in this fixture because Man City will definitely create chances. Man City will definitely dominate. It's all about whether Bournemouth can hold out for something and maybe try and hit City on the counter-attack or from a set piece or something to try and get something from this game. But if we're being honest, the favourites are Manchester City, they're favourites for a reason. I'm going to suspect that Haaland is going to get on the score sheet yet again and probably not just for one goal but for, but for more as well. And that is why I'm going to go for a Pep Guardiola victory, Manchester City to win and for this game to end 4-0 to the home side. Next up, we're at St Mary's for Southampton taking on Leeds. Southampton, of course, ended up with that, ended up on the wrong side of that absolute thrashing by Tottenham last weekend, whilst Leeds actually surprised a few people by coming back and beating Wolves two goals to one on the opening day of their season. Interesting game, this one. You don't know what to make of both these teams. I think Leeds are strongly suspected of being relegation candidates. Southampton, I've seen, I've seen many people put them in their kind of picks to go down this season as well. I don't think they have enough, some people think they don't have enough quality to survive. I think they'll, I think they'll just about survive. They'll go for like a mediocre sort of middle of the road kind of thing in which they go completely under the radar for a while and somehow manage to survive. Bit on this game though, it could be interesting. Uh, two sides who are gonna try and be open with their play, try and be end-to-end um, uh, -end sort of thing. It could make for an intriguing game of football, in all honesty. I, I suspect that this game will probably go a little bit under the radar across the weekend. Um, but in terms of a, of a result, it's difficult to call. It could be either which way because of how inconsistent these two teams can be at times. So I'm going to just call it down the middle. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw here. Wolves versus Fulham is our next game of focus at Molyneux. This one could be an interesting game as well, given how these two teams performed in their opening day as well. Wolves obviously lost 2-1 to Leeds after going a goal up, while Fulham shocked and stunned Liverpool of all teams with a 2-2 draw. It was the very least that Fulham deserved. They played very well in that game. They were very... Uh, physical, they were very aggressive, they showed a lack of respect to Liverpool in a good way, they showed a lack of, they showed no fear as well in that game, which was very good for a, for a side to, for a new promoted side to show, and it made for a very interesting and, and exciting game to watch, where 
obviously many people including myself obviously predicted that it would be pretty one-sided and that Liverpool would be victorious but of course as we know now that wasn't the case. For Fulham it will be about trying to continue that form going forward and they face a tricky away task at, at Wolves. I do fear for Wolves though a little bit. I do feel that maybe the, the magic is wearing off for Bruno Large a little bit. I think you saw that last weekend in the way that they threw away their their lead. That's not what we came to expect of Wolves for a large part of last season. Normally when they got a lead, they were very tricky to break down. They were very solid and well disciplined and it caused them to obviously see out many games by the odd goal or two. Um, because they were very, very solid defensively and very disciplined. In terms of this game, again, it's hard to say at the beginning of the season what to expect from two teams that are kind of inconsistent and very tricky to predict. So I'm just going to call it down the middle again. I'm going to go for another 1-1 draw between these two sides. Saturday's evening fixture sees Brentford host Manchester United. Now this one is definitely going to be very intriguing because Brentford managed to come back from two goals down to draw with Leicester last weekend, whilst Manchester United were hit with a bit of a reality check in all honesty. After a summer in which people were, uh, in which United fans were getting excited about this, about life at Manchester United again, looking forward to a brand new season. Okay, their transfer activity had been okay at best, and there were obviously some um, some things to iron out and some things to work on. It was a bit of a reality check when obviously they came to Brighton and they were extremely poor. You do wonder whether uh, Eric Ten Hag has learned from his team selection mistakes. I don't think you can play McFred. Not that he has many other options, but you can't definitely play McFred in that midfield. Um, but at the same time, I think that Brentford could cause them some problems. I think the new signing Mikko Damsgaard will be an interesting signing for them. Whether he starts or not or gets onto the pitch in this game will be very interesting to find out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this game. I think this will be a very good side between... Uh, good team... Um, Good, good game between a counter-attacking side in Brentford and a side that's going to look to try and dominate the ball in Manchester United because that's obviously the Ten Hag philosophy that you want to impose on this squad um, and try and get the ball down and play and it's going to be interesting to see these two sides kind of go at it in a sort of counter-attacking uh, counter style of each other's play. Um, in terms of a result, again, you don't really know what to expect, particularly from the Manchester United side. Obviously, they're a different entity and an unknown sort of entity this season with how uh, they've got a, a bit of a new squad, new manager, of course, new style of play and everything. That's going to be interesting, but they do have match winners that we know that we know of, the likes of Ronaldo, Fernandez, and so on and so forth. Rashford, Sancho can always spring up with a goal or two here and there. It's all about how they're going to play, though. And I think that if Brentford show the kind of fight that they did last week and more, I think they'll get another point from this. I genuinely do. So I'm going to go with a 2-2 draw here. Sunday we'll see Nottingham Forest at home for the first time in the Premier League, uh, obviously this season, and of course for the first time in ages as they host West Ham at the City Ground. Um, this one I'm actually looking forward to watching because this one could be a very intriguing game. Um, in terms of obviously the, the the spectacle that is of Nottingham Forest being in, this, in the Premier League at the City Ground for the first time in ages, I'm sure that stadium is going to be very hostile towards West Ham. It's going to be uh, interesting and exciting to watch. It's going to be loud. It's going to be bouncing. It could be a, a very difficult atmosphere for West Ham to try and overcome um, in that aspect. So that could be um, a factor to, to think about when you're casting your own predictions. For West Ham, obviously, I know that both these teams obviously lost their opening game of the season. Forest lost to Newcastle, West Ham lost to Manchester City. Not many teams are going to beat Manchester City this season, let's be real. Um, so they can write that one off. Their season starts in this game um, but again they face another difficult task in its own right because of like I say it, it, Forest are going to want to put on a display for their fans they're going to want to uh, 
try and correct the performance that was of last week where they lost to Newcastle. They're going to want to try and put on a show for their fans in the Premier League for the first time watching it at the City Ground. So, I'm actually thinking that this will end up in a draw. I still think West Ham have the quality to kind of override the atmosphere level, possibly. Um, but this could be a very intriguing game nonetheless. And that's why I'm going to go for a draw in this one. I'm going to say that Forest and West Ham end this game as a 1-1 score. For the penultimate game, we're jumping ahead a little bit to Monday night's encounter. The first Monday night fixture of the brand new season is at Anfield, where Liverpool will take on Crystal Palace. Again, another intriguing game this one. Liverpool were not expecting to be uh, to, to have dropped any points in the opening game of the season against Fulham, but they did. They were second best all over the pitch that day, and that and they were pretty fortunate, in all honesty, to come out with a 2-2 draw and a point from that game. So, they'll be looking for a much better performance in this game. They'll be looking to probably um, looking to probably see the, the likes of Darwin Nunes start instead of Roberto Firmino, potentially. It's going to be interesting to see who they put in midfield, given, all, given the list of injuries that are, that are currently building up a little bit um, uh, with the Reds right now. So, that could be interesting, and it could be interesting to see uh, the kind of reaction to what was a pretty poor performance against Fulham, in all honesty. Whilst for Palace, of course, they lost 2-0 to Arsenal on the opening weekend. Um, again, that one was at home as well, so that would be even, uh, that would be even more damaging towards them. Um, and it was a tricky start. You go from Arsenal, who had a, obviously a good pre-season, good transfer activity, to now uh, Liverpool. Not the best of starts for Patrick Vieira, but... Palace have been or can be a thorn in many in many of the top sides uh, sides, uh, so to speak. So you know it could be a very interesting game this one for your Monday night game. But I still expect Liverpool to obviously get the job done. That's how I expect Liverpool to get the three points, and I expect Liverpool to put in a better performance than what they did in the opening weekend against Fulham and get the season back on track already. That is why I am going to go for a 2-0 Liverpool win and expect that Darwin Nunes not only starts, but once again gets on the score sheet. And for our final game of this round of fixtures, the biggest game in my opinion of this round of fixtures, the highlight of this weekend, it will be Chelsea taking on Spurs at Stamford Bridge. Massive London derby in prospect here. Of course, the underlying storyline here is Antonio Conte returns to his former club of Chelsea after obviously um, being a former manager there, winning the Premier League for them, going away to Italy, then coming back to the Premier League with Tottenham of all teams. And now this one is going to be a massive game. For Chelsea, it's about whether they can try and beat a top four rival, a top four contender uh, in Spurs. Um, whilst for Spurs, this is going to be a big indication as to what their season lies in store, in my opinion. Can Spurs finally beat Chelsea at, at their ground? Can um, Spurs put in a good performance against Chelsea at their ground? This is going to show how far Spurs, in my opinion, at least, this is going to show how far Spurs have come under Antonio Conte because this is going to be a massive game for them. And, and this is the kind of games where they could be difference makers come the end of the season when you're talking about um, places and Champions League spots and everything. These are the kinds of games that will that, that will make the difference, in my opinion. Like, you can still win all the other games, but these are the kind of games, um, London, uh, London Derby, big games like that, fans will want to win it. These are the games that obviously matter to the fans more than most and obviously will matter in terms of beating a rival and earning a, uh, their spot and obviously this will be in my opinion a massive indication as to where Spurs will finish. I'm looking forward to this game though, it could be very interesting, I'm interested to see um, the midfield battle, what kind of midfield Chelsea will go with in comparison to Spurs, we know that Spurs will probably go with Benton uh, and maybe Basuma as well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how, uh, how that midfield battle will go. Going to be interesting to see how the Chelsea defence um, can can handle the likes of Hyung Min Son and Harry Kane, of course, whilst Kulusevski is on the right hand side as well. Um, 
and whether or not the likes of Raheem Sterling and um, and, and Mason Mount and Kai Havertz or whoever uh, can break down what I expect to be a very solid Tottenham defence as the season goes on. It could be a very, very, very intriguing game in prospect and like I say it's going to be one in which is going to be a massive indication I think as to how far the Spurs side have come and whether or not Chelsea um, still have Spurs' as number in that respect. In terms of a prediction, like I say, I'm looking for I'm looking forward to a very exciting game in prospect between two sides who are going to uh, who are going to be very physical and battle very hard, count, try and counter each other in, in in different ways. I'm going to go with Tottenham win. I think Tottenham will be able to do it this time around. I don't. A draw is certainly possible. A draw may be likely, in, in all honesty, especially with Spurs being away at Stamford Bridge. But I honestly think that Spurs probably can do it. I think Spurs have enough firepower to overcome this Chelsea side. And that is why I'm going to go with a 2-1 Spurs win. But of course, as I always say, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it as this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of this weekend's upcoming round of Premier League fixtures? What do you make of, um, of, of the games itself? And of course, your own predictions. Most of all, of course, your predictions, because this is a pre uh, prediction show that's going to make for interesting reading all down below in the comment section, I'm sure. Also, fantasy football managers, who do you see having a good week? Who do you see having a bad week? Who are you putting into your squad? Who are you taking out of your squad? That will also make for interesting reading all down below in the comment section as well. But of course, most of all, I'm asking your predictions, because this is the Premier League prediction show. Uh, for game week two of the brand new season. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and listening. Hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both of you always and forever be greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Premier League Prediction Show, and I will see you all again soon in another video.